On November 19th, in the year 2013, at exactly 8.37pm, a Reddit user responded to an Ask Reddit thread about alien abductions and UFO encounters. The story that they told was so fascinating, detailed, and believable, that it is still being discussed and investigated to this day. As is their prediction, that first contact with an alien species will occur on July 18th, 2021. In this episode of Reddit Unsolved, we're going to take a look at the strange case of You Throw Away Liam. Alien abductees of Reddit are people who have claimed to see a UFO. What's your story? The thread ended up getting nearly 8,000 comments, many of which contained fascinating and believable accounts. But one post in particular stood out by a commenter named You Throw Away Liam. Let's take a look at that post. Throw away account because I'm afraid. I was first abducted in 1987. I was 12 years old. I say abducted, but it's not like that. Actually, you go willingly. It's scary, but it's exciting too, and they are somehow able to make you feel okay about things. It's not until later that you feel bad or like you've been violated. And they don't do a lot of probing, like raping or anything like that. That's Hollywood nonsense. They look inside of people sometimes, but they have machines that do it. Not really machines, but it's like a, like a room where things get done and the walls are... It's hard to explain. So just imagine that all the walls are kind of like x-ray machines. That's the easiest way to describe it. Sometimes there would be others there and they would be looking into them or they'd put them under and cut them open, but not usually. They took tissue samples from all of us, I think, and they never put you under or give you any anesthetic or anything like that. They just poke you. With like those things, they take samples of the ocean floor. Like that, but really small. They pull out chunks of you. Mostly they talked with me. Just questions and they'd show me things like television shows and things, and they'd ask me questions about them. I think the walls measure our reaction to things too, same as they take x-rays. I don't know that, but it's a feeling that I got. They never let you ask questions about what they are doing. Even once I got friendly with a few of them, they just do not like it when you ask them questions. They hate it. You can't understand their language. It just sounds like... I'm positive that we'll never be able to communicate with them in their language. I should mention that these are the greys that you hear about. Except they aren't grey, they are sort of beige, and it's claws anyway. They aren't naked. I don't know if there are others. People say there are, but I've only ever met these. Anyway, you cannot understand them, but they can understand you. And they can put thoughts into your head, but they can't hear your thoughts. You have to speak to them. They can't hear very well, or else they are not good at understanding English, so you have to speak loudly and slowly. I don't know if they understand other languages, but I'm pretty sure they would. They're interested in us. They're interested in all of us, in everything that goes on. They like a lot of things about our culture too. They like some of our music. Bluegrass is their favorite so far as I've seen. They like it a lot. They love that African instrument that looks like a gourd with 13 strings. Love it. But they cannot stand horns or horn music, so they hate classical music and jazz. I think trumpets sort of sound like their language. It's a feeling that I get, but I've never been able to ask them. They've taken me up just about every two years, I'd say, since 1987. Just about. Sometimes it's more often, but I didn't go up at all between 1995 and 2000. They usually keep me for what feels like a day, but it turns out to be about four hours. Usually. The longest I stayed with them was three weeks. During that time, they made me make phone calls and keep up appearances. They aren't really bad, well, I was going to say people, but they're not really bad people, or whatever. The two that I got sort of close with told me to call them Jack and Gina. I don't know if they're male or female or even if they have different sexes, but I know that those aren't their real names. They will make contact with Earth on a wide scale in 2021. That's the year when they'll land here, or colonize, or whatever. I'm not exactly sure what their plan is. They don't seem to be evil or dangerous. Their planet is, so they told me anyway, a long way away. A very long way away. They couldn't explain to me how far. Too far away for you to understand, but also close to the side. We don't have anything that they want. 
so I don't really know why they came here or why they've taken so many of us up or why they've gotten to be friends with me. They do not have any religion and they don't need oxygen or water or trees or anything. I don't think. They don't eat people. I don't think they want to breed with us or genetically engineer us. I don't know what they want, but they've been coming here for I'd guess at least 10 or 20,000 years. I'm not very good about history and Upper Paleolithic and all of that, but they've got video of all sorts of stuff and they showed me a video of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnon, which really were just like us humans except they all had black skin. Way less diversity. And all sorts of other human-like things. Yous, uses, or whatever. And they showed me videos of the pyramids being built and this huge stone building that I guess is lost somewhere or was destroyed but it was in Europe, I could tell from the video. They have video of them talking with all sorts of people all throughout the history of Earth. They showed me some of them and asked me questions about them, but I couldn't understand any of it because I only speak English and even the English from 200 or 300 years ago is so different that I could hardly understand it. So I told them that they probably knew more about it all than I did. I was up three weeks ago. That was the last time. I'm pretty sure that I'll go up again in a couple of years, but I'm not sure about that. The whole program, or whatever you want to call it, is going to change in July 2021. I think they said 8th, but it could also have been 18th. They weren't trying to intimidate me or even warn me, so I, I don't think we have anything to worry about. I hope they don't show the videos they took of me when they first started taking me up because I was so scared and young and they are embarrassing. Edit. I changed an accidentally racist bit in there that someone pointed out. Changed they were all black to all had black skin, way less diversity. Many were skeptical about throw aliens post. Still, others were fascinated and asked him for more info. To his credit, OP delivered and stayed for many hours answering questions. Let's dig into these posts and see what we can find. He's highly skeptical of most abduction stories. He says half of them are outright lies. Others are likely experiences warped by trauma. He's especially skeptical of any story that begins with someone going to bed as these are just likely nightmares. He says that the visitors are cold and professional, and they do not seem to want to hurt us. He says getting a tissue sample isn't painful, and is more like just getting a shot. In fact, he likens the whole experience to seeing the doctor, and says that it's more anxiety-inducing than painful, as well as time-consuming and annoying. He then mentions some human friends he made on the ship, and has since managed to stay in contact with over the years. He describes the greys as about the size of a small human, with the ability to zap thoughts into people's heads, but not to read minds. He describes them much like doctors or scientists. As well as tissue samples, they also take samples of pee and semen. Size difference aside, they are human-like. The only difference that he could see was that females tended to be shorter than males, but he wasn't really sure that they actually had gender. It was hard for him to differentiate between them, but he could tell Gina apart because she had a scar, or what looked like a scar, on her hand. He said that the footage that they showed him was mostly boring, except for some where they, for example, showed him the building of the pyramids. They also showed him modern TV shows and movies. They seemed especially interested in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Specifically, they wanted to know about HAL, the killer AI. They wanted to know whether we considered this comedy. They also showed him footage of World War I and World War II, and interviews they conducted with soldiers. They wanted to know why the war happened, and what specifically he thought the outcome was. Most of the other TV shows he was shown were pretty random. He was shown episodes of Law and Order. I got news for you. That means you're gay. Westerns, and even that film where Kirsten Dunst is a cheerleader. They show him these clips and then they ask his impressions. They also seem to be recording his thoughts and feelings. An interesting tidbit of information. After each of these sessions, he's given salt in a bowl. He's not sure exactly why he thinks that salt is either important to them, or that they think that salt is important to us. As an aside here, I'd like to point out that salt was especially prized in the ancient world. If OP is right and they have been here all this time, then it may even make sense that they would give us salt. He doesn't believe there's any sort of government cover-up, although he does believe that the government talked to them, or are at least aware of them. 
He doesn't think they're prepping for an invasion or anything like that, because basically there's nothing that we have that they would want, except salt. Despite being mostly cold and indifferent, he doesn't think that they're malevolent in any way. And that they're just studying us much like we would study dolphins or other animals in the wild. He said he wasn't afraid of making the post because he wasn't afraid of aliens. Just people. And he thought it was very unlikely that anyone would take him seriously. Skeptics of OP's story focused on two facts. One, he claimed that he was never taken from home. But in one of his many replies, he mentioned that at one point, visitors had came and knocked on his door. The second fact to be focused on, that OP had been shown video footage of English speakers from just a few hundred years ago and claimed not to be able to understand them. But as OP pointed out, there are Scottish people today who he can't understand. And also, you need to study Shakespeare in order to understand all of the double entendres and meanings in his texts. So it's not inconceivable that you wouldn't actually be able to understand someone from a few hundred years ago, even if they are speaking the same language. But OP didn't return to answer these questions. His final post, no more questions. They are not happy about this. Sorry. No more questions. They are not happy. I'm sorry. Would be the last things he would say on the subject. For seven years. Meanwhile, his story would grow and grow and grow. Until in the year 2021, it would surface yet again. The post was made to our UFOs with the title, It's Almost Time. The body of the post text said, You'll soon know more. The post was quickly removed by the moderators. A curious redditor called Great Brown Bear One managed to find their username, the Traveler 3649. They had made one previously deleted post to a subreddit with zero followers named True History of Earth. The post was titled How the Dinosaurs Really Went Extinct. It read A supervolcano in your present day Yosemite National Park mildly erupted. During this eruption, a large chunk of rock was launched into suborbit before crashing down into what would become the Yucatan Peninsula. The water levels were still very low from the polar ice that the rock ES18911ELE2322 did not hit water and hit on a beach, ejecting dust and water into the atmosphere. Four years later, combined with the gas cloud and ash from the volcano, the dinosaurs died out. Great Brown Bear One copied the post and posted it as a reply under the original deleted post, with a link to True History of Earth subreddit. Speculation soon went wild, and True History of Earth ballooned from zero members to 4,000. Seven days later, on the 28th of April, Traveller 369 submitted a post to True History of Earth with the title, Orientation. It read, My name is Adam, and I have been here on Earth, observing and living among you for 40 years. My home planet is located closer to the galactic core. We call it Otana, and it entered the Union about 7,000 Earth years ago. My current job is to help you get to better know the Earth, its history, and the two intelligent species that inhabit it. Some really critical things are about to become very public knowledge, and then I start posting here. You'll understand why when the event happens. He ended the post with a teaser for an itinerary of coming revelations that promised to reveal a whole plethora of fascinating lore and lost history, as well as hinting that the Earth is also home to an intelligent aquatic species that we are not aware of. The Aquatics, or the Aquafarians, as they are sometimes referred to. The responses contained equal parts skepticism and excitement, and every single detail was poured over. Many noticed similarities between Traveller 3649 and Throwaway Alien, and some speculated that they were one and the same, while others that Traveller 3649 was one of the very aliens who'd been studying Throwaway Alien's life. Traveller 3649 posted again on the 5th of May, promising that we would soon have access to something he called the Link. He said, A large chunk of the internet is being allocated to allow access to the Link. It is there that you will see all the videos and images for the entire history of your planet and the solar system, as well as access to the knowledge base for your current evolutionary and technical level. I chose this subreddit to help facilitate the understanding, discussion and context of what you will be seeing and learning. This Our True History of Earth is just one of the many official methods that will be used pursuing that mission. The link is the Union's version of the internet. The dinosaur post was posted prematurely. I simply hit publish instead of draft. 
As far as the glacial thing, you'll just have to watch the video or use the timeline to see for yourself. Trust me when I say, most of you will be far more interested in the Link than learning your history. Most new civilizations are. He posted again on May 22nd. Thank you for your patience. With the event rapidly approaching, I have put in a request seeking approval to post a few behind-the-scenes images of the operation. Once the request has been approved, we anticipate posting as early as the end of next week. For some of us, this has been our life's work, and we are so excited to be a part of this with you. Traveler3649 had thoroughly grabbed the internet's attention. True history of Earth had gone from zero members to 4,000 to 8,000 in the space of a month. But cracks were already starting to appear in Traveler 3649's story. Some pointed out that the Traveler's name was similar to an attempted ARG for the Netflix show Travelers, about a group of time travelers attempting to change Earth's history. Further evidence of this link was uncovered when a Redditor found an archived comment from Traveler 3649 claiming to be a time traveler who had traveled back as an experiment to see if it will change the timeline. It was becoming apparent that Traveler 3649 was indeed a LARP. But what of Throw Alien? Was he the same poster who was now claiming to be the Traveler? There were similarities in their story. The aliens being here since our early history, studying us and recording our history, and as others had pointed out when Throw Alien had originally posted, there were similarities to popular science fiction too, such as Stargate and The Keepers. On the 24th of May, Throw Alien would return one last time to set the record straight. Commenting here was a mistake, and I wish I hadn't done it. It changed everything for me. Not all in bad ways, but mostly in bad ways. I'm commenting again now because there are people on Reddit and probably elsewhere who are claiming to be aliens or that I'm a government agent or an alien agent or something like that. And they are all lying. I'm talking about the history of the Earth guy and the end of an era contract guy. These are hoaxes. They don't know anything and it looks to me like they are trying to take advantage of my story and my life to get attention. I haven't even visited Reddit for years and now I've seen all these posts about my comments. I wish I'd never commented at all. But July is so close and I won't be here much longer. So what's the point of not talking anyway? And I think I owe it to a few people who have meant a lot to me. It makes me angry to see people try to take advantage like this when people have really suffered and really want answers. So I'm trying to type it all out, maybe I'll run out of energy, or stop caring. But I'm going to try. I was wrong about a lot when I posted before and I'm sorry but I didn't mean to mislead anyone, it's just that I didn't know what I know now. The tone has changed considerably from his previous posts, seven years earlier. I won't read the whole thing because it's very long and you have a life, but I'm going to summarize and read some excerpts. I'll include links to the entirety of Fro Alien's posts in the description. He said that after he'd made his last comment, he was taken by the aliens again who were mad at him. He thought that they had some way of monitoring him at all times. Even though they were mad, he said that they didn't hurt him or try to punish him. I've been up 16 times since I commented on here and it's much more often now because they're almost done with me. I'm going up once more this week and that's it. I'll stay with them in the big ship for a while and then I'll go back with them. I found out a lot about them and it's mostly not good. They might kill me, I know that, but I also don't think they'll torture me in any way or imprison me or anything like that. Even if they are lying, it's a better deal than what I've got here. In 2015, he was arrested by unidentified government agents and tortured for several days. They never identified themselves, but they were pretty clearly FBI or CIA or something like that, and I was in the United States when it happened, so I know it was the US government. They kept me for three days and tortured me far worse than the aliens ever have. Abducted me again in 2018 at the airport on my way back into the country and they tortured me for seven days. He became much closer with Gina, who started allowing him to ask questions. However, communication with the aliens was difficult as their pronunciation and phrasing were difficult to understand. But he did learn what they call themselves, the Friends of Friends. He learned that the Friends of Friends actually do hurt humans. His abductee friend group, Diane, was taken away by the FOFs forever and Coach had died from colon cancer. He'd lost Sam too as Sam had become sort of famous since his last post and had distanced himself from Fro Alien and hadn't even attended Coach's funeral. He learned from Gina that there were three kinds of abductee groups. In the first they studied the participants for years or even decades. Fro Alien was in this group. The second group they study from afar. People in this group never even realized they were being watched, let alone studied, their entire lives. 
The third group is much more terrifying though. The last group is people who they use for physical testing, and that usually kills them. Gina said that they don't hurt people just to hurt people. They aren't mean, but that these people can't survive the testing. I'm not sure what it is that they do to them, but it kills them. I am really, really sorry that I gave the impression that they don't do this when they actually do. I didn't know about it at the time, and I swear that I wouldn't have come on here and commented that they don't hurt people at all when they do. He learned that most of the movies he'd seen about Earth's history weren't recorded by the FOFs. The friends of friends have only been here for something like 3,000 years. Before that, there were others here to watch us, and I think something bad happened and they were completely killed off by the friends of friends. And they got Earth along with everything else that those others had. I don't know much about those others, and this is not a thing I could really ask. I'm pretty sure that there was a war and the FOFs killed the others. I'm not sure about this either, but I think that the big ship might actually have been built or brought here by those others, and not by the FOFs. The big ship pretty much stays put, and I've still never seen it from the outside, so I don't know what it looks like. It might not even be a ship, I guess. It could be like an office building on the moon for all I know. Gina said there are a lot of different civilizations out there, and there are millions of planets with life on them. She said that there are only seven planets in the whole universe that are like Earth, where the dominant life form has simple problems. She didn't tell me a list of the simple problems, but she told me some of them were prayer and faith healing and churches and sorcery and magic and all that kind of stuff mostly, about religion. And of those seven, she said there were only three where people experienced deja vu or believe in prophecies or that worship idols. We are one of those three and that's why the friends of friends are here. That's why the others are here too. And that's why the next group is coming in July. Gina says that they know that the whole world isn't really what it looks like, but it's actually the creation of a single intelligence, and that we and everything exist inside that intelligence. I asked her if it was like the Matrix, and then I explained to her what the Matrix was, and she said it wasn't like that at all. And so then I asked her if it was like that hospital show that ended and it turned out all to be a kid imagining it in a snow globe, and she said it wasn't like that either. But she says that it's the one thing that everyone in the universe agrees on. All these thousands of thousands of advanced civilizations, they apparently all have proof that the world is imaginary, or a dream, or a computer program, or something. And they study Earth and the two other planets like it because they are pretty sure that these three planets and the intelligent life on them are either mistakes, like accidents, or else one of them might be the center of the whole thing. And everything else is a mistake, or an accident. They want to figure out which it is, so that they can better understand the intelligence that creates the world. Fruawalian mentions that this sounds like religion to him, but he wouldn't know, because he never finished his religious studies degree because contact with the FOFs seriously impacted his life for the worse, and he never finished. I think maybe when I was commenting here before, I was putting kind of rose-coloured glasses on my experience, because the reality of it is that my life doesn't mean anything to anyone and I am powerless, and it was easier for me to think of Jack and Gina as friendly, and as the things they do, just not so bad. It's clear that Froawalian is scarred by the repeated abductions, painful tests, and ridicule. He's lonely now. Coach has died, Sam has distanced himself and is now a popular well-known actor, Diana's left, and even Gina is either gone or just acts coldly towards him for no reason. He's met other abductees since, but most have died from suicide. He notes that most abductees, with the exception of Coach, are under 40. A lot kill themselves. Due to his changed perceptions of the FOFs, he no longer sounds sure that they aren't planning to colonize or invade on July 18th. I don't know for sure what the government report will be, but I think that the point of it is misdirection. There's a big change in the program coming and the FOFs are leaving, and that's one of the reasons I'm going too, I think. And something about that change, I think, might be really noticeable or destructive or something. There won't be answers in any report, just misdirections. That's my bet. I should mention that Froalian is leaving with the FOFs, as are all the other abductees in Froalian's group. The big change is that another group are coming to replace the FOFs. He knows almost nothing about this group. This took me a lot longer than I thought it would, and it's too late to answer questions, but I don't know if I would want to anyway. I can't tell you exactly what will happen on the 18th, and I don't care. Whatever it is, I just don't even care if it's destructive, or even if the people coming to replace the FOFs are terrible, and they colonize. I don't have the ability to care anymore. 
because I'm just tired and I've had to accept my destiny. The only way I make it through the nights now is telling myself that in a few weeks time, I'll get to see Diane and make sure that she's okay. I'm probably being stupid because they are probably going to do something bad to me, but it can't really be worse than this, and I have no choice but to believe that this will work out for me. I can't make it through the night without believing that, and believe me, I know how pathetic it sounds when I say this, but that's all I have to look forward to, is seeing a girl who is practically like a niece or a distant cousin who might not even remember me for all I know. She's been gone a long time, and I know that there are others of us that they have taken, so I hope that she's met some friends and is happy wherever she is. Wherever it is that I'm going, maybe there will be enough of us there that I can make some friends. I should mention that there's even more to this story. I could go on for hours covering every aspect, but if you're really interested, I've left links in the description where you can go and dive in for yourself. As of this recording, it's July 16th. The video should be live about July 17th. You're likely watching after July 18th. I find myself in the unenviable position of having to criticize this story that I love so much, but I also feel like I have a responsibility to be somewhat critical and not accept things as fact without corresponding evidence. The fact of the matter is that the field of UFOs has always been beset by misinformation from deliberate misinformation campaigns to LARPing to mental illness and even fraud. Promises about imminent contact are often just that, promises alone. But whoever Froalien is, I feel like they've endured more than enough criticism from the internet. I don't think they're lying per se, I feel like they genuinely believe the story. I could sit here and speculate on what that means for their mental health, but I don't want to kick them when they're down. Whether the story is real or not, their tone feels very much like honest feelings of burnout, depression, loneliness. So I wish nothing but the best for Froalien, and if they're looking for a friend, well, now there's likely thousands of us who'd love to hang out with them. Personally, I don't feel like anything's going to happen on July 18th. There's no proof that this story is real, and there's no proof that it's false, but the fantastical nature of the story itself is its own proof that it's fiction, probably, at least until July 18th. Until then, I'm about 90% sure that nothing will happen. The 10% of me that's not sure though, that's a different story. But I just would like to end this by saying I hope that wherever he is, I hope he's happy, I hope he has friends, and I hope he finds Diane again. And real or not, it's a hell of a story.